Hello guys, Nigel to review Nigel's Model Bench and it's review time again and this is something I've had and should have reviewed a year ago. If you look back at one of my build, uh, Lancaster build videos you'll have seen me mention this. And this is a company called Fishkoff and they sent me some stuff in an envelope and as you can see the envelope got crushed and damaged and the parts got damaged so um, they sent me some more. And uh, that was a year ago and I haven't reviewed them yet so uh, I was chatting to Carl up at Telford when he was looking at his beautiful... Um, Border model Lancaster, which converted to Dambuster, and he reminded me I have these parts that I promised I'd do a review on that I haven't done. Now, if you want to do a border model Lancaster, you have two choices. You can wait for the border model Lancaster to come out, or you can do what Carl's done and convert the B13 into a Dambuster um, using the fish cop stuff. Now, I've noticed from the Border Models kit, I'll put a picture up, there's a sprue of the Dam Buster parts and there's no motor design, uh, detail in there. So if you get the um, if you get the uh, fish cop one when it becomes available, there is going to be motor detail inside there and you can actually open the doors to have a look. It's got operating hinges, unbelievably. So um, it's in fact, it's here. You can see it in this magazine. And this is the Tamiya model magazine from August 2023. And you can see this beautifully built Dambuster Lancaster. And you can see on here all the 3D printed bits and pieces for the Dambuster, as you can see there. So you can see here as well with the working hinges. So that's all there. So that's going to be available imminently I guess. So if you've got a B1, B3 and you want to build a dam buster, you can either go and buy the dam buster kit from Border Model and spend another 600 quid or you can convert your B1, B3 into it. There are some dam buster parts in the B1, B3 kit, internal parts and that, but there's no motor. So as far as I know, this kit, this set will have a motor design and everything in it as well. So um, you could also get the Iconic Air version, but that won't fit the the border model kit it fits the hk kit they are actually differently shaped in the uh, in the under, underside somebody asked me to check it out for them and i did and they are they're a different shape in the belly so um there's an issue there um so what am i looking at today these beautiful merlin engines from the lancaster these are actually merlins you do get packard parts as well in the kit so you can build a mark one or a mark three with the correct engines um and they actually have the correct world time world war ii time radio radiators as well um, but basically, uh, that is what you're getting in the box, um, and it's there's still a few more bits of detail painting to do and some pipes to add, but that's basically it, and they're beautiful. Uh, I think they're the best Merlin engine out there. Um, some people would say the Tamiya one is nicer, I personally prefer this one. Um, now, if you want to go one step further and really make it pop, then there's a little set here from Fishcop. That's the logo there. You've seen the um, you've seen the logo at the beginning of the video. So that's the company Fishcop. They have a Facebook page. Go take a look. Go and sign up. Tell them I sent you. Um, and basically, uh, this is what you're getting. You've got a pair of cam gears. So you've got the vol the, the cam shafts and the rockers in there. Okay. So there's a left and right there, and you can see they've got the the pulleys on them, the the, uh, the gears on them at the front to drive the uh, to drive the cam. There, and you can see the two shafts either side. We've got the rocker arms down there. So it's very, very nice indeed. <laughs> There's some dust in that one, which I need to brush out. So I will brush that out a minute. Some uh, sanding dust, because I've been playing, which you'll see in a minute. So there's one there. Okay, there's that one there. And you, you've got two of those, obviously, left and right-handed. And then here, we have a spindle which is also nice if you want to do your model displayed on a stand, on a diode, pr propeller off, whatever. Because as you can see here, the kit spindle is quite simple. There's no there's no detail on it as such. It's just a, a round lump of plastic for sticking the propeller on. Whereas this one, I doubt if you're going to see it on here, but it actually has the splines for the propeller. It has the threads on the end. It has the castellated end piece on there for the locking pin. And it's also hollow on the end. It's beautiful, really is nice. So um, well worth getting. This is available on the Facebook page. And at the moment, there's an offer on, um, I think it's until Christmas and it's worth, it, it's cost 15 euros for that little set there. 15 euros plus the postage. Now, 
there's lots of people who've had these and fitted them. I'll put a couple of photographs up now. So you can just fit them normally like this, like just standard, okay? Um, and what you're doing is shaving away the plastic walls of the cylinder heads. So you've got the cylinder heads here. This is actually a Rolls Royce one. So you, you shave away the insides here and you cut away this section at the rear. Shave away the insides here and sit it down in. So you can see that will actually sit down in there and go down inside. Um, or you can really go to town and have it looking like this one here and put all the actual shape into the top of the aluminium casting. So uh, that looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? So you can do that. Now I've done one here quickly today. And it's taken me about 10, 15 minutes. One thing to remember um, is the actual casting of the cylinder head is slanted forwards. Okay, so remember to put your camshafts in so they're parallel to the exhaust ports. Because obviously the camshafts will remain parallel to the exhaust ports. They, so they don't sit in like flush, they'll be higher up at the front. And what I've done here is a combination of both. What I've done is carved away some of the cylinder head okay, to leave a wall, as you can see. But I've also carved away, you can see on the end there, carved away part of the, the 3D printed part. So, so you can either carve all the plastic away and sand the sides of this down and have it slotting in. Or if you want to do like that person's done with having the serrated edges, you can cut away all the um, cut away all of this here, get rid of all of that, and then drop that down in, which is what I've done here. Now looking at it, there's a bit of a hollow gap there, so probably the best thing to do is carve away the back and then fettle the front until it just fits nicely. So basically, I'm going to do one on here now. Um, which could take a little while, so you might just want to fast forward to the end. But, um, yeah, so basically what that's got to do is sit down in there. This is the left one. This is the left side. I'm using a Packard cylinder because I've got plenty of spares. So all we're going to do is cut away the plastic. Okay, now what I'll probably do is do some speeding up. Um, and we're going to shave away some plastic here. So we're going to shave away some plastic from in there just to thin this down. Okay, you could use a little motor tool if you wanted to, but I'm just going to use a knife. Now, as you can see here, I've made a hole. That's because the plastic in that area there is so thin. But it's just a kit. You have to go in there with a bit of super glue or something afterwards. In fact, I believe something goes in there. Um, yes, the end of this pipe here goes in there. So that hole's going to get covered anyway. So don't worry about it. And at the end of the day, it's in there. You're, you're never going to see it. So don't worry about that. So we've thinned that out now on the sides. It's going to thin it out a bit more. Okay, so now we've done that, we can come along and cut this back end off. And what I'm going to do is just cut it off there. Okay, so it's about right. It's not quite square. Okay, now I'm doing this very quickly just to show you the, the sort of the idea behind it. Um, you would obviously take a lot more care and you might want to carve that shape into it and everything. And now what I'm going to do now is cut away this lump in the back here. Okay, so I'm just cutting away that to get it all parallel. Remember, never do this with a blunt knife. You will cut yourself. Always have a nice sharp knife. Otherwise you find yourself pushing with a blunt knife and you'll go right through the side into your finger and it'll be a a and E job, which means you'll be there until Christmas waiting, probably. Okay, so we can come with a coarse sanding stick now and just sand, sand away to make sure that's all nice and parallel at the back. Right, so we can clear up some of our mess. I'm going to get my tea hoo little vacuum, put it in the top. You get these on Amazon. Right. So now that's got to fit into there. 
Okay, so what we're going to do, what I like to do is look at this, and if you look at the two rocker arms, there and there, see those two rocker arms, obviously they need to line up with the center of the um, exhaust ports. So basically we know how far we need to cut the back. So we've got to come in quite a long way there. So we may actually remove some of the 3D printed part rather than the plastic. You see, if it goes back here, like we've cut this off here flush. And if this here, you can see, if I remove, remove some of this plastic from the bottom of here. You can see we have an edge to work to. So if I put that edge there, flush, you can see, sorry, it's there, isn't it? There's the edge. You can see they're, they're actually pulled back. So I'm just going to take away um, some material from here. So what, the way I'm going to do this, now this is designed so that what you can do is thin the plastic right out and drop it in. But what I'd rather do is remove some material from here. So I've got, again, I've got a coarse sanding stick. I should have a mask, but I don't. And I'm just going to sand away some of this. Now, the safer way to do this is to cut it rather than sand it, because you don't make the dust. If you do it with, with a sanding stick, you're making dust. With this, you won't make the harmful dust so badly. You could wet it, do it in a booth with a vacuum, whatever. And as you can see, I'm only scraping away from the back at the moment, not the front. What I'm going to do is scrape away until I, you can see I'm also doing it on an angle, I'm, I'm scraping it like this, you can see it's on an angle rather than just straight. Okay, so just scraping that away at the back until I reach the edge of the You'll see these holes appear in the sides. That's when you know you've gone far enough. Okay, do the same on the other side. This is one method of doing it. There's, a, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as we all know. But um, this is the way I've chosen to do it. And I'm just going to get in there with a sander stick and just start, sand this out nice and squarely. Now again, this is a scrap part. You can see it's one of the damaged ones. So that's why I'm not being particularly careful with it. I'm just using it to show you basically how you can go about it. And as you can see now, that is starting to drop down inside. Now, the rockers are lining up, which is good. So what I'm going to do is come in with my knife and just remove a lump of that plastic from in there. Just like so, and I do the same on this side. That was actually broken before and I super glued it back together. That's why it just fell apart. This whole thing might fall in half in a minute because this whole end was actually broken off and I've super glued it back on. So see, you can, you can see it's got a great big hole in it. I don't know what the Royal Mail did or the German Post or whatever, but they, they really did crush this. So you can see that will now drop in there. They still don't quite line up, so I'm going to remove some more material from here. It's going to, it's going to fall apart, I think. <laughs> we shall see. But um, basically you won't have that problem because yours won't be broken. But we can see now that's starting to drop down in there. And what we need is for this upper flange face here to be parallel with the plastic on both sides you can see that it's going to go back in, it's going to go in. So what I'm going to do now is sand this here. And as I say, this is the, this is the non highly detailed way. What you could do is carve all this away completely and then, and then cut the scallop shapes and everything you want into your, into your cylinder head. So we'll see how that fits. Now you can see that is starting to go in there beautifully. So I'm going to scrape some more away from here.
yeah, the end's broken off. Let me um, see if I can get this glue back on so we can continue. Okay, so I've got that glue back on. I've got a great big lump of super glue in there to get glue it back on. Obviously, if yours is broken when you get it, just contact Fish Comfort. I'm sure they'll replace it. I'm just going to blow off the dust so that it looks a bit better. Get the airbrush and blow the dust off. Like so. Right, so now what I've done off camera, I've done a bit more sanding on this front end. So as you can see, that now drops in there. The rockers pretty much line up. It needs to come forward a bit more, doesn't it? It does need to come forward a bit more. So I'm going to see if I can sand some more off of here. There we go, that's a lot better. As you can see, it fits in there beautifully. And what we want is for the top of the camshaft to be parallel with these exhaust ports. So I'll just, so I can show you, I use my calipers. So I can come off the bottom of there, the bottom of the, the cylinder step there. So I can go to the top of the camshaft there and the top of the camshaft there. And as you can see, we are pretty much parallel. So all we need to do now is a drop of super glue in here. I'm going to put some in around the back because we'll have a little bit of gap filling to do there. Having said that, it's all fictitious because I will never use these because they're all broken and busted. So that's just going to fit in like that. And like that. And there you go. And that, my friends, is in there. <laughs> Job done. So as you can see, we've got a lovely now. We've got a lovely piece for our dio. Now, at the end of the day, in reality, down in there would be the top of the cylinder, the top of the cylinder bore. Uh, so it'd be like the head is is part of the part of the the block, as you like, not not the head. Um, or maybe it has got a cylinder head. There's a line around there. Maybe it has got a separate cylinder head and a separate cylinder block. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so basically down in there, all you would do is fill that in with some some gloss, very dark grey paint, um, and and you're done. And then, as I say, as I showed you in the photos, you can go around and carve all that up and make it all look realistic. But when you put it on your engine, even that quick tatty little job, as you can see, it fits up nicely with the the cam drives on the back, and that's a proper. Good looking little engine with exposed cam gears. So there we are. So that's that. The other thing that's coming up very shortly, you'll see it's very similar to this. As we all know, the Qatari Spitfire has no engine detail. So over at Fishcop, they've been working on this, and this is the engine set which is imminent um, for the for the Qatari Spitfire. So to all of those of you that wanted an engine and wanted it to be the right scale size and everything, there you go. And if you look on the um, Fishkopf uh, Facebook page, I've actually got on there and asked the question, will you be making engine covers? And he's come back and said, sounds like a good idea. So it'd be nice to get some really thin 3D printed engine covers as well to go on there and perhaps fix them on with magnets or have them taken off in your display, whatever. But there we go. That's the, uh, that's the cam gears there on the Merlin engine. And um, yeah, even though I've put them on and they're all broken and busted, they still look great, don't they? And there's a good look at the at the real thing, at the proper ones that aren't all broken and busted. You can see the, the cam gears and everything on there. All looking lovely. Okay. Hope you've enjoyed that. There's another look at that spindle as well. That's a beauty, that is. So there we go. Um, as I say, that little set there, the two cams, the cam gear and the uh, and the spindle there. On special offer until Christmas 15 euros so if you want to get your engine looking like that rather than that then you know what to do I'll see you all soon thank you for watching bye for now